If you want to buy a foldable phone in India, you have to spend a lot of money. And I'm not talking about flip phones, I'm talking about proper foldables. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 costs 1.5 lakhs. The older Z Fold 3 costs 1.3 lakhs. So when I heard about a new foldable phone in India that only costs 88,000 rupees, I was like, okay, this is exciting. Well, I've got the device right here. This is the new Techno V Fold. And this is a phone that brings the foldable premium experience at a price that's way lesser than the Z Folds. I mean, I've been using this phone and there's actually a lot to like and a lot to talk about. See, the big, big highlight is this foldable design, obviously. So the phone has two screens. The cover display is a 6.42 inch curved AMOLED. And I like that Techno hasn't cut any corners here. It's an LTPU 120Hz display with Gorilla Glass Victors, 1100 nits of peak brightness, same as the bigger inner screen. And more importantly, this has the 21 is to 9 aspect ratio, which is standard on usual Android phones, unlike the weird 23.1 is to 9 aspect ratio of the Z Fold screen, which is a bit too narrow. I mean, the Techno's outer screen just feels very natural to use, especially while doing things like typing and this is a high quality AMOLED panel. Anyway, unfolding the device brings you to the bigger screen which is also impressive. See, this is a big 7.85 inch AMOLED with the 2K plus resolution, LTPO 120Hz refresh rate and the same 1100 nits of peak brightness as the cover screen. Now, the 8 to 7 aspect ratio does result in letterboxing, especially in YouTube videos, but movies and shows in apps like Netflix do look better and you can even fill up the screen in Netflix like this, although some of the content is cut. All said and done, this is a vibrant and bright AMOLED panel and it looks good. But when it comes to foldable phones, there are two big doubts always. One, the crease and second, the durability. So let me make it clear, the Techno Phantom V Fold's foldable display does have a crease, but it's minimal. You can feel it, you can see it from certain angles, but the big takeaway is that it does not hamper the experience, not at all. It's not visible when you're looking at it straight on, and I honestly got used to it. As for the durability factor, this is solidly built. The hinge is said to be made of aerospace grade material, and it looks pretty seamless. And honestly, I've been doing a lot of unfolding and folding, and I haven't heard any weird noises or creaks, so it's all good. Another thing that's reassuring is that the device has no gaps when folded. Now, one thing I did note is that you cannot half fold this device and set it up on a table like some of the other folds. It automatically always unfolds. Look, that apart, the one thing that makes the foldable experience great is the UI because the UI in foldable phones needs to adapt with the bigger screen as well as the smaller screen. And while Techno's high OS isn't perfect, it's clear that Techno has made some efforts to make good use of the bigger screen. For example, you can open up multiple apps on the big screen via different gestures. You can swipe down from this three dot button to go into split screen. You can even tap on this menu to go to split screen or turn an app into a pop-up window like this. You can go to the multitasking screen and drag an app over another to open them in split screen. I also like that the OS remembers your split screen apps so that you can open them up quickly. You can even save split screen configurations through this option. There's also this smart panel that opens up if you hold the back gesture like this and you can just drag an app from this panel to open in split screen. There's also a five finger pin gesture to put an app into a pop-up window. You can also swipe up and hold to put an app into pop-up window. Yeah, this is packed with gestures. Look, all of these multitasking features make this phone very productive, but I also like the fact that almost all apps and services in this high OS have a dual pane design, making good use of this bigger screen. Be it the messages app or the phone app, the camera app, the file manager and more. The OS also has a driving mode, so you can use this big screen as your car's infotainment system if you don't have one. There's also screen relay options, which basically lets you choose how you want the transition from the inner screen to the cover screen to be, and it's nice to have. The camera app also takes advantage of the dual displays. You can use this option to take a selfie from the main camera like this. Anyway, this foldable design has all the mainstream features you expect. There are stereo speakers, a fingerprint scanner in the power button, which is nice and fast. I also like that even though the phone weighs 299 grams, it does not feel bulky. The weight just seems very evenly distributed. It's also a very premium looking phone, aluminum frame, the leather sort of soft touch finish on the back, which by the way is made of recycled plastic. The camera bump though is a bit different with one camera bump on top of another. The specs though are high end. This is powered by the Dimensity 9000 Plus chipset with up to 12 GB LPDDR5X RAM and up to 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. Anyway, the 9000 Plus is MediaTek's flagship phone nanometer chipset from last year. So benchmark scores are obviously good. It hits 900K on Antutu. It does well in Geekbench as well as 3DMark and there are no throttling issues on the phone. 
Now you already saw that the device was smooth when doing all the elaborate multitasking gestures and I like that gaming on this is really good too. I mean first of all games look amazing on the massive screen and gameplay is very smooth too. The cameras are also packed. On the back you get a 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel telephoto camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now the camera does have all the features be it night mode, 4K 60fps video recording and a lot more and photos from the main camera are good especially outdoors and kind of decentish in low light but yeah I'm still testing things. The two more cameras here there's a 32 megapixel selfie camera on the cover screen and there's another 16 megapixel selfie camera on the inner screen. When it comes to battery, the V Fold has a 5000 mAh battery which is a lot bigger than the Z Fold's 4400 mAh battery and I also like the Techno includes a 45 watt fast charge in the box which takes the phone to 40% in 15 minutes and 100% in 55 minutes. The battery life is also good. We got a screen on time around 5 hours on heavy usage which I think is pretty good. Look all said and done, the Techno Phantom V Fold is definitely a solid foldable phone for its price tag. I mean the foldable design here seems refined, the UI is making good use of the foldable design so I actually like this. I mean yes there are a few features missing and there are a few doubts but overall Techno has achieved in making foldable phones more affordable and that's what actually makes this an interesting device for people to try. I honestly want to know from you guys what do you think of the new Techno Phantom V Fold? Do you think this is the beginning of more aggressively priced foldable phones? Comment below and let's discuss.